If you've been following this channel these last few months, you'll know I've spent a lot of time talking about these pads. These are made out of Tracker Runner, which is something that I think is really good in the workshop. And while I really like using dog holes to hold my pads in place, I didn't want to add a bunch of dog holes to my main workbench. In this video, we're going to make a portable finishing plate that will fit into a single dog hole or even a bench clamp. This project has three parts, the table, the pads, and the blades. I have a free website that will walk you through all three creations. But really, this is a simple project. I started off with a piece of plywood. With a thin strip of wood, I drilled five holes. One of which being a pivot hole. Measuring up 12 and a half inches from both sides of the plywood, I found the center. With my awl as a pivot point, I drew four circles, the last being the outer perimeter of my table. Then I divided my three circles into four quadrants. Using a ruler, I measured off equal sections all the way around. Now with parallel points, I went around and connected the dots, creating this grid. Easy. I made a map you can download free from my website that will show you where to plot 26 points. As you can see, it's just a matter of lining the map out and adding marks on the plywood. Then I cut the plywood to size with my bandsaw, cleaning it up on the disc sander. Most drill presses should be able to drill the outer 20 holes, but I made a quick jig with a couple pieces of scrap plywood to get the six inside holes. The jig makes getting the correct drill depth very simple, which is important as you'll want the pads to all be at the right height. After drilling and sanding the entire thing down, I used a quarter inch drill bit to drill the 25 outer holes. The 26 center hole we'll get a one inch spade bit. This hole will be large enough to fit a 3 8 flange that you should very easily be able to find in your local hardware store. To attach the flange, I used epoxy and four screws. Go ahead and put that in. The only other metal piece you'll need is a 3 8 nipple that's about three inches long. As long as your dog holes are three quarters inch in diameter, this shouldn't be a problem for you. If you don't have a hole in your table, but instead have a bench clamp, this will slide in easily and work just as well. Since the flange is about a quarter inch thick, and since it protrudes from the bottom, I used quarter inch strips to level a base, which I glued and added weight to the top to hold it down. To make the grippy pads that fit inside the holes, I made a simple bandsaw jig, which is nothing more than a couple pencil lines, a hole, and a quarter inch bolt. I cut 26 squares out at this point, found the centers, and drilled a hole in each. With the holes drilled, I grabbed a few strips of tracker runner, like which can be found in your local hardware store. I have an entire video showcasing this magical gripping material. As well as a set of web pages dedicated to this carpet. It's simple to apply. We'll use Mod Podge and pressure to glue the carpet onto the blocks and then cut the blocks apart again. With these cut, I put my circle cutting jig on my bandsaw and held it down with the clamp. I easily inserted each block onto the bolts and spun. Cutting my blocks down to circles so that they easily fit in my finish table. With the hole in the circle, I epoxied a cone-shaped threaded rod that you can easily make with your sander. What's nice about the finish table is that these quarter-inch bolts fit inside the holes we drilled earlier, 
so lifting it onto its side and storing it keeps the pads from falling out. If you watched my grippy pad video, you'll remember how I used a couple wires to do narrower pieces of wood. With this, I created blades that you can rest those odd shaped pieces onto. Which is basically just plumbing strap either screwed to the side of a 1x2 or inserted into a notch. Now it screws onto the base of the pads. There are a number of things that I like about this finishing table. As already mentioned, it can easily be added to any workbench or workbench clamp. But because it pivots on the single center point, it also allows me to spin it as I'm sanding or finishing. This means I don't have to stretch across the piece to sand, which can create a lot of fatigue. But it also means that when I'm finishing, I don't have to pick up my project to get each side. I can leave my project in place and spin, looking for any part that I may have missed. The spacing of the holes are great as it means I can do larger projects or move smaller projects closer to the center for more gripping surface. This is something that a bench full of evenly placed dog holes would have a problem with with my original pads. If you're a veteran to woodworking, you know that your workbench is your pride and joy. Having a surface that is dedicated to finishing allows me to use spray paint or to drip oil or finishes on the top without defiling my workbench. Like the grippy boards, I can cut plywood on the top without the need of a clamp, except with this, Due to the way the pads are spread out, it makes it easier to quickly cut plywood as I don't have to position my boards just right. I'd like to thank my Patreons that help keep this channel running. Michelle B, Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Tommy QR, and Zach Finch. If you'd like to get early access, see how some of my secret projects are coming along, and get a free all, join me on Patreon today. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at MakeThingsWithRob. And remember to keep making things.